The Three Days of Darkness is a prophecy that has captivated the imaginations of many Catholics throughout history. According to this prophecy, the world will experience three days of complete darkness, during which time demons will roam the earth and the faithful will be called upon to endure great suffering and trials. The origins of the prophecy are unclear, but it has been attributed to a number of saints and mystics throughout history. Some believe it comes from Saint Hildegard of Bingen, while others attribute it to Saint Patrick or Saint Teresa of Avila. The prophecy of the three days of darkness has also been associated with the ten plagues in the book of Exodus and with the apocalypse of John. The plague of unnatural darkness mentioned in the sixth seal and fifth vial of the apocalypse has been seen as a possible parallel to the three days of darkness. However, the specifics of the prophecy are not found in either the book of Exodus or the Apocalypse of John. The details of the prophecy are derived from private revelation, which makes the prophecy an obscure aspect of Catholicism. Nonetheless, the prophecy has been embraced by some Catholics as a powerful and urgent message from God, emphasizing the importance of spiritual preparation and repentance. The prophecy of the three days of darkness is relatively simple, the world will be plunged into darkness for three days, during which time demons will roam the earth and cause great destruction and suffering. The faithful are urged to stay indoors during this time, with their doors and windows closed and covered, and to pray and repent for their sins. The prophecy also states that during this time, a great purification will take place. Those who have prepared themselves spiritually will be protected, while those who have not will suffer greatly. The faithful are urged to make use of sacramentals such as holy water and blessed candles to protect themselves and their homes. The Three Days of Darkness prophecy has been interpreted in a variety of ways by different Catholic groups and individuals. Some see it as a literal prediction of a future event, while others see it as a metaphor for spiritual purification and transformation. The prophecy of the Three Days of Darkness holds a fascination for Catholics worldwide, regardless of how they interpret it. Whether it is viewed as a portent of catastrophic events or an exhortation to deepen one's spiritual life, the prophecy remains a potent symbol of the enigmatic and extraordinary character of Catholic prophecy. According to Father Mark Goring, darkness may be an eruption of volcanoes that can shroud various parts of this world with dust during three days. Humanity cannot go outside due to a pestilence. It is impossible for us to use man-made lightning. Darkness also means losing our electrical power. F.R. Mark also thinks that for some reasons, we will lost our usage of the internet for three days. We will have no internet connection, no access to the outside world. Many would be devastating. F.R. Mark shares at the same time, if there were three days of darkness during the time of pestilence, we need to understand that the Lord will not allow it to take place for a long time, so we will get through it easily. Furthermore, we are in a situation which we're locked down in darkness, no internet, we're supposed to pray. Light a blessed candle, pray the rosary and repent simultaneously before our Lord to be saved. Beside F.R. Mark, Padre Pio also gives some powerful advices to us on how to protect yourself during three days of darkness. Hurricanes of fire will pour forth from the clouds and spread over the entire earth. Storms, bad weather, thunderbolts and earthquakes will cover the earth for two days. An uninterrupted rain of fire will take place. It will begin during a very cold night. The wind will roar. After a time, thunderbolts will be heard. Lock all the doors and windows. Talk to no one outside the house. Kneel down before a crucifix, be sorry for your sins, and beg my mother's protection. Do not look during the earthquake because the anger of God is holy. 
Jesus does not want us to behold the anger of God, because God's anger must be contemplated with fear and trembling. The wind will carry with it poisonous gases which will be diffused over the entire earth. Satan will triumph. This catastrophe shall come upon the earth like a flash of lightning at which moment the light of the morning sun shall be replaced by black darkness. No one shall leave the house or look out of a window from that moment on. Keep your windows well covered. Do not look out. Light a blessed candle, which will suffice for many days. Pray the rosary. Read spiritual books. Make acts of spiritual communion, also acts of love, which are so pleasing to us. Pray with outstretched arms, or prostrate on the ground, in order that many souls may be saved. Do not go outside the house. Provide yourself with sufficient food. The powers of nature shall be moved and a rain of fire shall make people tremble with fear. Have courage. I am in the midst of you. Pray. Pray. I desire your prayers. My dear Mother Mary, Saint Joseph, Saint Elizabeth, Saint Conrad, Saint Michael, Saint Peter, the little Therese, your holy angels, shall be your intercessors. Implore their aid. Be courageous soldiers of Christ. At the return of light, let everyone give thanks to the Holy Trinity for their protection. The devastation shall be very great. But I, your God, will have purified the earth. I am with you. Have confidence. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil, may God rebuke him we humbly pray, and to thou O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God. Thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits, who wandered through the world for the ruin of souls, Amen. O glorious Prince Saint Michael, Chief and Commander of the Heavenly Hosts, Guardian of souls, when creature of rebel spirits, servant in the house of the divine king and our admirable conductor. You who shine with excellence and superhuman virtue, deliver us from all evil who turn to you with confidence and enable us by your gracious protection, to serve God more and more faithfully every day. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to their protection, implored thy help, or sought the intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother, to thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word Incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. To you, O blessed Joseph, do we come in our afflictions, and having employed the help of your most holy spouse, we confidently invoke your patronage also. Through that charity which bound you to the Immaculate Virgin Mother of God, and through the paternal love with which you embraced the child Jesus. We humbly beg you graciously, to regard the inheritance which Jesus Christ has purchased by his blood, and with your power and strength to aid us in our necessities. O most watchful guardian of the Holy Family, defend the chosen children of Jesus Christ, O most loving Father, ward off from us every contagion of error and corrupting influence. O our most mighty protector, be kind to us and from heaven assist us in our struggle with the power of darkness. As once you rescued the child Jesus from deadly peril, so now protect God's Holy Church from the snares of the enemy and from all adversity, shield, too, each one of us by your constant protection, so that, supported by your example and your aid, we may be able to live piously to die in holiness, and to obtain eternal happiness in heaven. Amen. Let us also recite the act of contrition together, that outlawed by his most precious blood and sacrifice on Calvary. May cleanse of all our iniquity and sin, and grant us the grace to feel truly saddened and remorseful, 
for all the transgressions and sins that we have committed intentionally and unintentionally that he may also give us the grace to do all the necessary penances, and never commit these grievous sins any more. O oh my God, I'm heartily sorry for having offended thee, and I detest all my sins because of digest punishments, but most of all because they offend thee, my God, who art all good and deserving of all my love. I firmly resolve with the help of thy grace, to sin no more and to avoid the near occasion of sin, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you for watching and may God pour down an abundance of graces and blessings upon all of us. Till next time, stay blessed and keep praying.